everybody, and welcome to this special edition of Hometown Hype. I'm here with our very own Coach Morris, and Coach Morris, we are so glad to have you on our show. Uh, we've been wanting to talk to you for a while, and we're finally getting to sit down and talk with you. I'm so excited about, you know, i got a bunch of questions I'm going to ask you, and I know that a lot of people have been wanting to hear from you and been wanting to talk to you as well. well it's, it's a pleasure of mine that you'd come interview me, because I, I feel excited about this. Let me say this. The Morris family is Popperville from that side of it. Going back over the years, there were 10 in our family, seven boys and three girls. Six of us played football for Popville High School. Six of our sons played football for Popville High School, including my son Randy. Our daughter Lee was a cheerleader from the eighth grade to the senior. When she's in college, she came back and coached the cheerleaders. The big part of it is my wife, who was Sherry Smith at the time, was a frontline player on the 1963 only state basketball girls championship. So y'all were Popperville from the get-go. So we were Popperville yeah, all the way. So you come into Popperville in 1974. Right. Um, so did, were you immediately the Popperville head coach? Was that what, in 1974, I got a chance to come to Popperville as a head coach. Did you feel like my, you were my two children we were fixing to start the school? And I felt like Poppy was the place I needed to raise my children. So they offered me the job, and so I did come. You know, it, it was a situation where they hadn't won a game in two years. But Alvin Doyle was retiring. He had, uh, had a undefeated season in 1971 at Poppyville. So I came there and found something that, you know, it took a lot of hard work to get it turned around. Did you feel like you were ready for that head coaching position? Like you said, at Hancock, you weren't really, you, well, yes. you weren't ready? Yes, but after the experience because I had so much head. responsibility at Brother Martin, I developed an attitude of how to be a, a, really a head football coach. Head football coach. That's, That's awesome. awesome. So you come in there in the spring of 74, right? and you have football season that starting in that August. I went in the, in the spring part. I, I found a lot of stuff in this right there. The, the dressing room was in disarray. So we, we made up, I made up our mind that we were going to clean it up. We went in there and repainted the lockers, put carpet on the floor, put them a, a window unit in, and filled it up with motivational signs. Okay. That particular time, the time of the year, I, most of the coaches weren't doing it. I required them to come to school to weight lift during the summer. I required them to be able to run a mile at a certain time. So that was a challenge, not to run them off, but a challenge to get them ready to play the game of football like it should be played. Kind of elaborate on that wing tee for me real quick. Like, what well, it was, uh, it took us a few years. Uh, we were a, a, a wishbone offense when I came in, when I brought from New Orleans, and we found out that we needed to do something different. And I had a coaching friend that told me that I needed to look at the offense that they were doing there in New Orleans. So I went down there and his name was Randy Muse. We've been lifelong friends forever. He showed me how to run it. I went to Tubby Raymond University of Delaware and learned how to run it. So we put it in. And the wing tee is something that we still run today. Like it's never yeah. left Popperville. And yeah. that's what every coach that has come after you, they have run the wing tee yeah. offense. So I, really. I was the first coach to ever introduce the wing tee to South Mississippi. Really? Nobody else had ever run it until I ran it. So we introduced it and, and got it involved with things and other coaches looked at it and wanted to adapt to it. I, I probably, maybe three or four other high school coaches, I've tried to teach them how to run it. Yeah, well that's what we've seen a couple other high schools too running it. And so what what do you think, why, or why do you think that it still is a success to this day. Like, what what do you think makes that wing tee stand out that it's been able to be successful all of these years and it's still? Well, the misdirection part of it, because when an opposing team puts his players out there to defense you, he's got to put confidence in them that they'll know where the ball is. Most of the time, they don't know where the ball's at. Right, because it is so confusing. And it's so it's, it's a deceiving type offense, blocking with angles and all that, that particular down peak. So um, let's talk about, you were, you were coaching there for 38 years. That's a, that's a long time to be coaching. Do you feel I like it's a long time? I guess it was. You feel like it's a long time? I guess it was. I, I think that's a little bit of a long time. Can you, you tell know, me about those years? 
to, you know, you go back over those years and you look at, as I told you before, winning that first ball game, winning the Apache Conference, and then winning many district games, and then we get very close to a state playoff one time. And then all the young men I was able to coach and I can still associate with, that is a big, big thing of my life right now. You came out of retirement, didn't you? Yes. I, uh, you to come out of somehow or another, I had several of my former athletes want me to come back to coaching. Lance Beach was retiring. I wouldn't have done it if he wasn't retiring. And then they they brought me, you know, back to the school and to the generosity of our superintendent, Gilda Fitzpatrick, I was I decided to come back and be here. So you want to come But one of the primary reasons is I promised my athletes over many years that I was going to get them a field house. And so that was my motivation when I come back out of retirement was the fact that I was going to do that. So that, to me, that's one of my highlights of my career is finishing that field house at Poppyville. That's pretty awesome. Because, it, it, you know, it belongs to all those kids since 1974. I want to get your thoughts on what's going on with the Poppyville program today. What Do you have any kind of thoughts on on the Hornet football program today? I, I have a lot of pride in what's happening in the Popfield community right now. Yes. And the fact that so many people are supporting the program and then the attitude that Coach Beach has got those players in that they play for each other, not individual. Yes, sir. And, and to me, that's the pride. Is Popfield supporting them. Popfield's always supported the football team. But they're more so now than they ever have been. Yeah. And then the fact that the, the players are are not selfish by any means. Yes, sir. And they work to get better each each and every year. I have six grandkids. When the youngest one was six years old, I had them in a mile running contest up in Hattiesburg. They went up there. All six of them won a trophy for their age class during that particular time. And let me point out to you, this is Peyton. He ran track, ran cross country. This is Sarah. She's been a cheerleader since eighth grade. This is Jake. He's a quarterback at Stanislaus now. This is Will. He's a receiver at Stanislaus now. Here's Pat. He's a backup quarterback at Stanislaus. And this is Grace. She's been a cheerleader. She runs track also. So they've all been very competitive. And I am very proud of them. That sounds like that beginning of the Pat Moore family that you were telling me about. That y'all all play them sports and everything. Yes. It's just continuing on down. Just going right. Well, Coach Morris, I want to just take a minute and really thank you for everything that you've done for Popperville and you know me coming from Popperville, growing up in Popperville, and being able to sit here and hear the history of it and know that. It, Popperville is not just any uh, ordinary school, that we have a legacy and we have something that was established so long ago that we keep close to us uh, every day and still continuing that and I think that is so awesome and I'm just so thankful for you and everything that you did bring to Popperville High School as a coach and as a person and you know and all of the things like the field house and the field that they play on today and I want to thank you for coming in and talking with me us at Hometown Height. We are more than happy to have you come and talk with me and tell me all about this. And I just want to thank you again for everything and for talking with me today. Thank you so much. I do believe in Popperville. <laughs> believe in Popperville. Right. Time.